Please listen carefully. Well, hello, universe, and welcome to the Optimist Daily Update. I'm Christy Jansen. And I'm Summers McKay. And we're part of the team behind the Optimist Daily, making solutions the news. We bring you reader-funded solutions news every day in order to change the tenor of news media, social media, and the direction of your day to help us all get focused on what's going right in the world. Seven days a week, we publish positive news stories written by award-winning journalists and delivered online to your inbox and through our social channels. And also, we are sharing these solutions in a commute-worthy, walk-worthy, home office-worthy, binge-listen over the weekend on a road trip-worthy podcast. Uh-huh. Today is Monday, the 17th of January, 2022. Does that mean you have a road trip coming up, Summers? Actually, you know what? I might have one planned in February because there's a chance we have to do a little family road trip. But I was referring to one of our amazing listeners who posted on social media about the fact that she was going on a road trip for work and her intention was on the entire drive to catch up on all her Optimus Daily updates. She took us with her on her road trip. I love it. I love it. We are road trip worthy. Well, happy Monday, everyone. I hope you guys all had a good weekend. Christy, did you have a good weekend? I did. And I got some good sleep as well. Uh, Well, thanks to the sleep (laughs) pick. I really enjoyed that conversation with Diane Macedo last week. Her book is very useful. Everyone who listens to this podcast hears about the hysterical struggles of having a strong partner with whom we largely disagree. And... (laughs) I loved her reminder that the sleep solutions that might be right for me are not going to be right for my partner. And I actually (laughs) dialed down the white noise. Oh, that's nice of you. And I like that she couldn't tell me how to talk to my husband about his sleep apnea, potentially. (laughs) So she's interested in fixing sleep, not in fixing relationships. (laughs) I like that she was an expert who knew her subject matter, but did not offer to be a marriage therapist. (laughs) So I had kind of a crazy morning this morning that I want to share with you. Okay. Now, I live in a rural but developed area. There's lots of wildlife around. And this morning, our next door neighbors, beautiful German shepherd dogs, while I was putting my daughter into the car to go to school, and my husband, you know, was kind of helping get the car organized, the dogs were just barking like crazy. Now these guys will bark once in a while, but they don't bark like crazy. And so my husband went out and no more than six feet from our garage door was a full-size male coyote. Not skinny, not hungry looking, curious and on a hunt. Was he looking at Brennan? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I don't know if he was exactly looking at my daughter. So Will kind of chased him away. But number one, a huge thank you to my neighbor's dogs for alerting us to this situation, right? And they're on invisible fences, but they both look like they were ready to jump over the invisible fence. They knew something was not right. So Will chased this coyote away and the coyote sort of sauntered away and didn't really commit to running. It was like, all right, fine, I'll go elsewhere. And then we hopped in the car because I wanted to snap a picture to put it on our neighborhood app. And this coyote just did not care. Didn't care that we were driving behind him. I was like, is the moon full? Is this a werewolf? What is happening? So we drove around the neighborhood and we notified a couple people who were out walking their smaller dogs, like just so you know. And so people kind of tucked back into the house and we took a few pictures of it. But it was just one of those moments where man's best friends were protecting my daughter. And will I? What the sign is, is it's mm-hmm. time for you to get yourself a new dog. I know. I know. And then I was like, but how quickly before the puppy can fight a coyote? (laughs) We did get to go see the puppy this weekend. And I think what our plan is, is that probably we will get this puppy and then six months time, we'll get another dog so that they are not litter mates, right? So we don't have litter mate syndrome, but they can have one another and then we'll, you know, but it was just the first time that I've had nature kind of show up and boss our house around a little bit. I mean, I'm constantly trying to ensure that our property is good for the whole ecosystem, right? And we don't use poisons and we don't use, you know, pesticides. But this was definitely a coyote who thought my daughter looked tasty. Yeah, Summers, I think this is a great opportunity for a transition into my story, talking about how you're suddenly in nature and you're part of nature too. We're really not that different than the animals that live on this planet with us. So my headline is, you know, maybe highlighting that just a bit because it talks about a study that finds laughter is common in more than 65 species of animals. And that's just the ones that they're looking at, right? There may be others out there that also laugh. 
I think uh, he was laughing at me. I, I don't know if they're on the list of laughing animals. They may not do so well in a lab setting, which is where these researchers have discovered this. But laughter, we may sort of naively think that it's a trait that's exclusive to humans. But it is not the truth. Mm-hmm. At least that is what they're finding more and more. I do know of a study with rats that laugh. They love it when you tickle them on the belly. It's just that they laugh at a frequency that we cannot hear. So they're not listed in this study to my knowledge either. I haven't read the whole thing. I'm just reading our little version of it. But some researchers at UCLA have been exploring the occurrence of laughter across different animal species by doing a a survey of research across the field, investigating existing scientific literature on animal play behavior. And so the scientists were looking for mentions of vocal play signals as an indication of the presence of laughter in the animals. And what they found is that it's actually quite common in the animal kingdom. They have recorded laughter across at least 65 different species of animals, including primates, cows, dogs, foxes. So if dogs and foxes are laughing, you you know that the coyotes are laughing at you. <laughs> exactly. I was going to say that that coyote was just chortling. Seals and bird species like parakeets and Australian magpies. And it's just something that uh, animals do. And the surprising thing is that even animals who are distant from humans in terms of evolution, you know, animals who have not been in our family tree, so to speak, for millions of years also have laughter. What they're seeing is that laughter is a sign of playfulness. It's a part of social communication. And study author Sasha Winkler is quoted as saying, when we laugh, we are often providing information to others that we're having fun and it's an invitation to join. Some scholars have suggested that this kind of vocal behavior is shared across many animals who play. And as such, laughter is our human version of an evolutionarily old vocal play signal. I I love this. So, uh, you know, to know that they're finding humor and playfulness through laughter, I think is, you know, as much as we're joking that the coyote was laughing at my fear, but we've absolutely seen animals who are playing. And, you know, I saw the most adorable video of a chimpanzee laughing as somebody showed him a magic trick. Mm -hmm. It's that perpetual reminder. And Christy, you remind us that we are animals. We're not that different. The artificial distinctions that we like to make, because we humans enjoy putting things into boxes, it makes the world feel more controlled, Mm -hmm. which we know we have very little control over it, (laughs) as we have (laughs) learned in the last two years in particular. And we have some control, obviously, but not as much as we like to think. And so the findings are intended to help scientists better understand the function of human laughter and shed light on its role in the evolution of our own social behavior, because we are a social animal. And I don't know about you, but I laugh at my dog all the time and I'm sure he's <laughs> laughing back at me. I'm sure Tucker is. <laughs> Tucker's laugh is kind of a low little like smirk. Like, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, what do you want to talk about today? So, you know, I think all of our stories kind of I guess the story that I started with this morning, they all kind of fit together because it is about understanding the natural world and how we fit into it. I love this headline. This headline is about a group of women who we've got to get one of them on the pod. Headline reads, science moms are on a mission to spread science-based climate optimism. As we all know, when we feel overwhelmed and hopeless, many of us turn to our mothers or mother figures for comfort and encouragement. Now, as adults, the challenges we face are much bigger than just a scraped knee or a lost blankie. These days, wider problems like climate change may lure us into despair. Climate anxiety, climate despair. Christy, you're kind of an expert in understanding that. It's a study interest of mine. I wouldn't say I'm an expert yet, but yeah. (laughs) Well, luckily, there is an organization, a group of women called the Science Moms, who are here to help understand how climate systems are changing and to fight the heavy attitudes of climate doomerism. This diverse group of moms, they come from all over the U.S. and probably soon all over the world, are working toward the goal of promoting solutions-based dialogues and research on climate change while fighting the stigmas that inhibit female academics and scientists. Above all, they wish to equip other mothers with the information they need to educate themselves and their own children about how they can conserve the planet. The story goes into some quotes and some more information about some of the the women who are participating. 
Joellen Russell, who is a climate researcher from the University of Arizona, shares that it turns out that her students and her community members and her kids' classroom teachers and all the rest of everybody were waiting for them to shake off the shackles of just the science and talk about the values part. And what I love about this is that it's not just here's the information, it's the tactics of what can you do about it. And what can you do about it, but also why we ought to do something about it. Yeah. The values part is such an important piece because it goes back to the motivation. And once you get over the the bigness of the problem and mm-hmm. the, the science jargon and get connected to the fact that we all can be empowered actors in helping make this world a better place. I think this is a really fantastic group of people. I want to learn more about them too. I know. So on their site, they have four ways to help, which is share, talk, join, and write. And share is basically sharing their videos. They have a whole video series, nonpartisan, nonpolitical, informational, and value opportunities. And then they have a talk, which is actually a downloadable toolkit on how to talk to your children about climate change. I love it. And then join There's a social group, you know, a a social media group that they have part of. And then write, send a letter to political actions and ask your reps to follow science and preserve the planet for our kids. So when you click on the send a letter tool, you can select where you live and it will help you compose a letter to your representative. This solution makes me so happy. I want to donate to this organization immediately. (laughs) I just love everything about it. It's totally up my jam. I think about the forest schools and outdoor nature schools you and Carissa were talking about last week and science moms and laughing animals. And it is a happy (laughs) Monday here at the Optimist Daily. It is a happy Monday. I like it. What else is on the headlines today? We also have an e-made autonomous drone helps save the life of cardiac arrest patients. A strange metal may be the future for a more efficient energy world. Maya Angelou becomes the first black woman featured on a U.S. coin. Ancient humans wandered Ethiopia long before previously predicted. I have a very sweet spot in my heart for Ethiopia. What else do we have, Christy? A tip sheet on how to use your procrastination tendencies to make an effective to-do list. An NHS app, which is helping U.K. families curb the record rise in childhood obesity. A key ingredient in cat litter could help us reduce methane emissions and a smart harness which helps visually impaired people avoid collisions while walking well everybody thank you for joining us this monday on the optimist daily update as always we promise to continue to share positive solution-based stories with ideas on how you can participate in this changing world and ensure it's change for the good be like a science mom everybody and become an emissary on the optimistdaily.com put five dollars a month toward reader funded independent journalism with a solutions focus helping make this world a better place with problem solving mindsets for each and every one who listens and reads the Optimus Daily. Thanks, Summers, and thanks everybody for listening. And we will be back tomorrow with more solutions.